So the Game Changers documentary is creating a ton of controversy. Everybody's talking about it, everybody's writing about it, some for, some against. And in the wake of the video I made on it, I got a lot of feedback from you. Comments and messages, which I really appreciate. Several people wrote disagreeing with my views, and that's totally fine. For example, Jeffrey wrote, I eat mostly meat, I disagree with vegetarian vegan diets, but I also recognize every person's right to choose. I also want to say, the points made by this gentleman are valid and well thought out. See, we can talk about nutrition and agree or disagree and not yell or call each other names. All good. Also, Jeffrey Escobar, definitely not messing with that guy. So I read a lot of your comments. There's over 2,000 at this point. Some things just kept coming up over and over again. So today we're going to address the most common questions, your questions. So let's go. A lot of people brought up bias. I heard a lot about James Cameron's pea protein business. Now, I think we should be aware of conflicts of interest. It's a great mindset. This comes up all the time in science with industry-funded studies. The egg board and the dairy industry are notorious, but there's also plant-funded research. Almonds, avocado, kiwis, etc. So I still read those studies, but I take them with a grain of salt. Exact same thing with the movie. We don't take it as gospel. We fact check. What's solid science and what's embellishment for the screen? Hence, the fact check video. Like I said, I think Game Changers makes some important points, but I also disagree with several things in there. We have to keep in mind, it's a movie. It's fine to watch it, but we shouldn't be getting our life and death information like nutrition from movies, whether they're documentaries or not, with in industry ties or not. Bottom line, we gotta rely on solid sources. We can't just trust people, including myself. Fact check everybody, because at the end of the day, it's our butts on the line. I guess that's why James Cameron's a movie maker and I'm not. My movies would be really boring. I got a lot of those. I was too critical or I was too favorable. So I really want to make a very serious point here. Nutrition has somehow become this war where you're either on one side or the other. And we're not really listening to each other or trying to understand where people are coming from. Here's a really important comment I want to feature. Let's listen to what he's saying. Brooks wrote, I'm not against plants, but how do you explain the success the carnivore diet has had on numerous people suffering from autoimmune disease, gut dysfunction, and depression. This is very real. He's talking about pain and relief. I know this is real. My own mother is going through some similar issues with GI problems, and we're trying to work through it, and it's not easy. I recently moved halfway across the world to try and help figure this out. There are some complicated issues like dysbiosis and SIBO and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, that we're trying to work through, and it's, it's complicated. It's not just, oh, do this, do that. I see it in the comments all the time. I had complaints from meat enthusiasts because I said there's evidence for benefits of plants. And I had complaints from vegan enthusiasts because I criticized some aspects of the movie. And a lot of us are just sitting at the edge of our seat, just waiting to hit that dislike button. Go ahead, say something bad about my diet. I dare you. I wanna do more videos about this in the future. Why some people seem to have a hard time tolerating some vegetables well. It's a real issue and it's painful. I've talked to several people in this position who tried to eat more vegetables and had physical symptoms. I have people very close to me who have these issues, so I know what it looks like. So if you're in that situation, let me know, comment below, or contact me on Twitter or Facebook. Um, I wanna continue this dialogue and try to understand this better and make more videos on this in the future. And thanks to Brooks for writing and not just dismissing everything. Let's try to get to the bottom of it. Okay, next. That's a very common point. For example, Rick says, if you switch from McDonald's to plant-based, you see a decrease in chronic disease and an improvement in health. I would be more interested to see somebody on a Mediterranean diet switching to plant-based. Very reasonable comment, great question. The preponderance of the evidence, that's just nerd speak for big picture, consistently points not necessarily to a specific diet, but to a range. That range is plant heavy. So getting most of your nutrients and your calories from whole plants. That range includes eating only plants, it includes vegetarianism, and it includes things like Mediterranean. Mediterranean here meaning some meat, but mostly white meat and fish, and otherwise very plant heavy. So we have a lot of evidence of all kinds, interventional, mechanistic, observational, consistently pointing to this range, which is why every leading expert or nutrition scientist will tell you essentially the same thing. Lots of fruits and vegetables, and go easy on the ultra-processed foods, red meat, and high-fat dairy. That whole song and dance. So. If you're in that plant-heavy range, and that's whole plants we're talking about, you're doing pretty darn well, and you're eating healthier than most. Okay, what about within that range? Do we know if vegan is better, or Mediterranean, or vegetarian? The confidence here is lower, which makes sense. It's easier to distinguish a big difference than a small difference. 
It's resolution, right? Signal to noise. You'll see some legitimate debate. For example, some nutrition scientists will argue that Mediterranean diets slow the progression of heart disease, whereas going even further to vegetarian or exclusively plant diets seems to actually reverse it. So that's one argument you'll hear. You can actually experiment a little bit yourself. I made a video a while back about my own cholesterol values. They were slowly climbing as I got older. And I was literally raised on a Mediterranean diet. I grew up in the Mediterranean region. And yet when I went even plant heavier, my cholesterol dropped a lot. Now that's anecdotal, which means not everybody will necessarily experience the same. But the point is you can look at those values and have a pretty decent idea of where you are. And then you can decide if it's worth it for you with that information in hand. Another thing people will point to are the risks of heavy metal contamination in fish, which is a big part of the Mediterranean diet. So bottom line, within this plant heavy range, it's a bit of an educated guess. And I think it's an interesting discussion. It's valid. Uh, but if you're within this plant heavy range, whatever you call yourself, whatever the label, you're pretty much crushing it as far as the general population. Also, peace of mind also matters. The goal is to find a healthy pattern that you can sustain for years, for life, ideally, not a summer. That's the ticket. Totally mea culpa. I got like a hundred messages about that. The opening scene shows Marines and I said army guys in the video. My bad, honest civilian mistake. They're US Marines, I got it. I love that people fact checked the fact check. Keeping me on my toes, that's what I'm all about. I appreciate it, thank you. Really common point. Some people even call it, is it the cow or the how? Short answer is, we don't know for sure. We don't really have data on long-term health effects of eating grass-fed meats. Some studies indicate a better fat profile, less saturated and trans fats and more omega-3s. But others show the opposite, more saturated fat and trans fats in grass-fed beef. What about actual health effects? This study looked at blood markers after a few weeks eating grass-fed. LDL cholesterol was similar to people on grain-fed meat, and triglycerides were actually higher more than twice as high. In the researchers' own words, at this point there is no scientific evidence to support the claims that ground beef from grass-fed cattle is a healthier alternative to beef from conventionally raised grain-fed cattle. What about wild game? Maybe that's better. According to this study, elk has about as much saturated fat as commercial beef, and more than chicken. On the other hand, it does have more omega-3s, and you dodge all those antibiotics that come with factory farmed animals. So I guess if you're gonna eat red meat, elk may be a safer bet, maybe. At the same time, this type of head-to-head -head comparison we see everywhere misses a larger point. No matter what you feed the animal or where it's raised or whether it's a little fatter or a little leaner, we still have fundamentally the same product, animal muscle. And that's always comparatively high in cholesterol and heme iron and raises IGF-1 and TMAO, all things that have been independently tied to disease risk. And of course, with zero fiber or phytonutrients. No amount of tweaking the product can change that, unfortunately. So bottom line, until we have some actual data, one way or another, on what happens to people eating this long term, we can't say it's safe. We can't say it's harmful either. We just don't know. So people who are fine taking that risk will go for it, their call, and people who are not can get most of their protein or all of their protein from the many plant sources available. All right, next. We kind of touched on this already, but it's less about whether you eat any animal products or not, and more about the overall pattern. Does your typical meal look like this, like this, or like this? That's the main question. Whether it's 100% or 99% or 95% plants, I focus less on because most people are nowhere near this range. So it's a bit academic as far as the general population. You want to go 100% plants? Good. In all likelihood, very healthy diet, if you're doing it right. You want to go 90% plants, but leave some animal products in? Also a good move. I wish more people would do it. And if that 10% helps you maintain the 90% of plants in the long run, then maybe that's the best option for you. There's no point going 100% in and then give up after like a week. People focus a lot on that last 1%, but health-wise, it's the 99% that's going to have most of the impact. Okay, there were some other comments that were just hilarious. Apparently, I sound like George Costanza's boss. Hire this man. <laughs> and Ollie says, I have the same mouth as Damien Lewis. Now, I had no idea who that was, so I looked it up, and turns out Ollie is spot on. So if this science thing doesn't work out, I can always be a Hollywood mouth double. Options.
I know you've got things to do, places to be, but if you found this video helpful or interesting at all, consider sharing it with other people who might benefit and hit that like button and subscribe for future videos. Also, I just started this Facebook page where all the videos and other nutrition information will be posted on a regular basis. So check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. And feel free to link up with me on Twitter where I share a lot of science information every day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.